This Westminster Shorter Catechism study video brings us to the very end of the section that relates to the law of God. And these catechisms, we're going to look at three of them, 82, 83, 84. What they do is they summarise what the law of God means to us today. So we've looked at the Ten Commandments, we've looked at what they mean, what they have to say to us. But what does it all mean? Is it simply an irrelevance? Does it matter to us today? Well, these catechisms show us, and I'll bring you the scripture proofs as well, to indicate the relevance, the solemn relevance of the law of God. These catechisms are dominated by the phrase, all have sinned. Regardless of who we are, what our religion is, what nationality we're from, how good we think we are, all have sinned. For indeed the Bible says that all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. And sin is how we measure up to God's law. Sin is not how we measure up to our own standards or what other people think of us or what society thinks of us. Sin is how we measure up to the law of God. And we all have broken God's law. The 82nd Catechism asks the question, Is any man able perfectly to keep the commandments of God? And the answer is, no mere man since the fall is able in this life perfectly to keep the commandments of God, but that daily break them in thought, word and deed. None of us can perfectly keep the law of God. We either keep God's law or we don't. If we break God's law in one part, we've broken it all. So the law demands perfection. And not one of us are perfect. We are incapable of being perfect. If you think you're capable of being perfect, there's something rationally wrong with your understanding of who you are and what you are because we are prone to mistakes and every mistake is a sin. We are an imperfect people. Not only that, but we break the law of God daily in thought, word and deed. So the law goes underneath our deeds, to our words and to our thoughts, to our intents, to our desires. It's all covered here. Not one of us can keep God's law, but we break it in more ways than we imagine. Just the fleeting thought coming to the mind, just the one desire that we quickly put away because we know it is entirely wrong, that renders us a guilty people, guilty of keeping the law of God. Thoughts, how many thoughts we have. If every thought was written out for all to see, we'd be embarrassed and humiliated. There are thoughts we would dare never put into words or actions. And yet those very thoughts render us sinners. Indeed, the Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 8, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. The scriptures also say, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Sin is something that's endemic in our nature. Sin is something we cannot escape from because all have sinned. Let's move on to the next catechism. Number 83, are all transgressions of the law equally heinous? Are all sins the same? Some, some sins in themselves and by reason of several aggravations are more heinous in the sight of God than others. So while all sin is a breaking of God's law, not all sin is the same. Obviously, if you think you would like to kill somebody, that's not quite as bad as killing them. It still means you've broken God's law. But when you go out and kill that person, while well, you remove their life, you commit the terrible crime of murder. And therefore, that is much worse. So uh, that's what the scripture means by the fact that some sins are more heinous in the sight of God than others. But there's something we need to understand here. Sin is a step-by-step -step process. The thought of hatred 
can lead to words that are full of threat and they can lead to the act of murder and the act of murder began with the thought so while the thought is not quite as bad as the actual act the act began with the thought and so the thought renders us guilty of breaking the law the same is said for all manner of sin and so we need to curb the thoughts we need to deal with the thoughts because of where they may lead to the thin edge of the wedge as we say sin is a step by step process from something that seems to be innocuous and innocent something that no one can see to something that is total and absolute scandal that brings disgrace upon ourselves upon our families and even upon our community and so we need to be ultra careful with sin we dare not play with it just as we dare not play with fire the scripture teaches that all sin is not quite the same in Psalm 78 verse 17 we are told that the children of Israel they sinned yet more against him by provoking the most high in the wilderness they sinned against God and they sinned yet more against God you see God is a God of patience and he's full of long suffering but even with the children of Israel his patience ran out and there are sins that cause God's patience to run out in fact the Lord Jesus Christ said one of the greatest sins is to neglect the gospel to refuse to listen to God's word he said woe to you Capernaum because Capernaum had Christ he said it will be more tolerable in Sodom in the day of judgment than for you because you sinned against light and we are a privileged people today with the word of God with the gospel many sin against the light they go their own way having had many opportunities to come to Christ that I would argue is the greatest sin of all sometimes the greatest sin is not what we think it is and so we need to be careful with sin and ultimately we need to turn to Christ the only remedy for sin and to refuse to turn to Christ is to leave yourself in the most awful predicament imaginable how shall we escape the Bible says if we neglect so great salvation now we come to this 84th catechism which is the final catechism relating to law what doth every sin deserve every sin deserveth God's wrath and curse both in this life and that which is to come so regardless of whether it is a sin in the thought or a sin in the word or a sin in the deed it deserves God's wrath and curse every sin deserves God's punishment crime and punishment if we break God's law the hammer the full weight of that law will come upon us it is terrible enough to be found guilty by the law of the land it is infinitely more worse to be found guilty by the law of God and one day there will be that great judgment seat the dead small and great will stand before him and the books will be opened the records of all of our deeds and all of our thoughts and those not written in the Lamb's book of life will be sent away into everlasting fire Ephesians chapter 5 verse 6 says let no man deceive you with vain words for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience the wrath of God the curse of God's law coming upon the children of disobedience again I appeal to you if you don't know Christ come to Christ today to escape the punishment that your sin deserves because he bore it all on the cross for us I'd like to thank you for listening today please look out for the following episodes in this series upon the shorter catechism indeed you can review the whole series by looking for our playlist on YouTube thank you and God bless you